Hey, you want to learn something useful? Come on, let's go. Hi, this is Chris at My Handyman. In our last video, we showed you how to open the can of paint. In this video, we're going to show you how to pour the paint, clean it up, and get it ready after you close it up to label it and store it. Okay, those are some pretty big things. So, what I like to do is because I'm actually going to be working with the paint itself, is I'm going to put on some gloves. The reason I'm putting on the gloves is because paint gets on your hands and then it gets all over everything and you can't and you got to stop and you got to wash and then it dries on your hands and your hands look like you get spots all over them. So when I feel that the gloves are, are have too much paint on them and I start leaving spots all over, I take the gloves off and put on new ones. All right, so here we go. We're back to the can of paint. I'm going to open up the can of paint with my five-in-one tool. Just like we did before, put it in, curl it just a little bit, curl it just a little bit, curl it just a little bit, and there it is. All right, we open up the can, there's the paint, all right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pour it into a bucket. Now I use this, uh, it's called Handy, Handy Paint Pail. And I like this, I can get it at Lowe's, I can get it at, at, at Home Depot. Um, also they come, the nice thing is they come with these liners, okay? You buy the liners separate. The liners are for this particular bucket and what I like about this bucket is is after I pour the the paint in here um, and when I'm done I can take the liner throw it away and I have no cleanup all right so what I'm gonna do here also I like it because it's got an adjustable handle for your hand so you can hold on to it kinda nice while you're painting you can do your thing now the other cool thing is it's got a little magnet right here right on the inside there, little black magnet. You can take the metal brush, part of the brush, and sticks right on. So you can, if you decide to put it down, it's right there and you don't have to put the, the paintbrush on the, uh, on the workbench or wherever your work surface is. Just keep it right there and it works out perfect. So what we're going to do is first off, remember I told you, I told you I, I, would, I would tell you some tricks if I, if I came across them. This one here, right along the inside where this top goes, see the gray part of this top, right in here? That goes inside this ridge and it, and it seals nice and tight. But what happens when you pour paint is, is that ridge gets filled with paint. We don't really like that too much because there's a lot of cleanup involved with that. So what my uncle, had done and his and, and his name was Carl and he was a he was a wallpaper and, and a painter and he was a great man. He taught me this. He says just take the sharp end of the five in one tool or your screwdriver, put it right in that ridge, just give it a tap and it puts in just a little dent hole. And it's kind of a weep. And put another one in. And you can see then I'm only putting in about that much. You can see that it only went in about that far. So that's not that big of a deal. So when we pour the paint, and I always put it on, like I said before, I always put it on to the instruction side because the label is on the other side. And if you want to read the label, you can't if you've got paint all over it. But the instructions, you've already bought your paint. You already know how many gallons you need for the for everything and you know that it's this particular you know that whether you bought a an oil-based paint and what products you need to clean up and or if it is a water-based paint and you know that you can just clean it up with water and you don't and you know all this while you're buying the paint your paint person would tell you that exact same thing and you already have some knowledge with that so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pour this paint into the pail and I'm gonna show you what happens here I'm gonna grab it from the bottom here I got it by the handle you can see that. And I'm just gently going to go over, pour it into the pail. 
I'm going to lift up ever so gently like this. See how it's still dribbling like that? Now I got my paintbrush and I'm going to go across it just like it's a little kid. You know, you a uh, little kid, you're scooping stuff in his mouth and you're going to just take a little bit off his lip with the, with the spoon. All right, so now I'm going to clean up that ridge just a little bit. I'm going to move this out of the way because I want you to see this. This is the part that needs to be seen. After I poured the paint in, I got a little bit of paint on here and that's you want as little as possible on the, on the can. So you're just going to clean it up with the paintbrush. This is the paint paintbrush you're going to be painting with anyway. So and clean up inside that ridge just like that. Now, as you're painting, as time goes by, whatever's left in that ridge, those two weep holes that you just put in, additional paint will go down and go back into the bucket. That's what they're for. That's exactly what they're for. Now I've got paint in my bucket. Now I've got a, I'm, I am right now ready to start painting. All right, so now let's say we are finished painting and we got to clean up everything and get things ready for storage. You painted your walls, you painted your ceilings, you painted your doors, you painted everything you want to paint. All right, so let's clean this area up first here. Now you still got paint on the inside of this and it's, and it's still wet. Now the proper thing to do is not just to put the top on it and say, okay, here we go. Because you don't know when you're going to come back to this can of paint. What you want to do is you want to take some paper towels. It takes just a few moments to do. Pinch it just a little bit like this. Put it inside that rim. Give it a wipe. Give it another wipe. Because if you don't do this and you go to open your can of paint again, for those who have painted in the past and have opened up a can that's already been painted, that have been used, you get paint particles that go back into the good part of the paint. And then try to paint with those particles around, that's not so good. So, by just, by just a little bit of cleanup, you're all set to go. Now, that's not the only part that you clean. Clean off the top. And the reason you want to clean off the top is because of the exact same reason. Now, the, you think to yourself, well, it should be okay. It's inside the can. Well, the largest amount of the paint isn't going to be a problem. It's the small amounts of paint that eventually dry, crack, chip, and fall in. Especially over time. Let's say you don't open this can for two more years. You just want to do some touch-up work. Well, this is all going to be crusty and nasty looking. So what you're going to do is you're going to just, just wipe it up. It takes just a few moments. Get, it as, get as much of the paint off as you can. It doesn't have to be right down to the gray. It doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get the bulk of it off so you don't have to worry about it. Now, you can put this back on, right? One more step. Just to safeguard everything, keep everything fresh, to make sure that this, uh, you still, you're still a little bit moist in here, but to help keep the moisture of the paint in and keep this rim fresh and to make sure that the next time you pull that top off, that things come off much easier because you're putting metal against metal. Put a shopping bag over top of it. Put your lid back on. Tap it down. Does it look glamorous? No. Will it keep the 30, 40, or 50 dollar gallon of paint fresh? Yes. So you're okay on that one. Now, here's the next thing. Today is April 8th, 2020. So I'm going to put 4, 8, 20, 20 on the can that tells me 
when I painted, approximately when I purchased it and all of that. Also, I'm going to say what room this was in. I'm going to say bedroom, uh, let's just say master bath, okay? Master bath. That's it. Now, when you're storing the paint, now here's a big thing too. You gotta remember this too. When you're storing this paint, some people have garages, some people have sheds, some people have basements, some people have storerooms. The biggest thing is, is don't store this outside. If you're in a warm climate, you can put it into the gra into the into the shed or into the uh, garage or into an outside storage area. If you're in a colder climate, let's say up in the uh, um, uh, let's say where you get snow. Snow means things freeze. If you put this out in the garage, there's a good chance that this isn't going to be good the next year. Is when this paint thaws, and then you that when this paint freezes and you try to thaw it again, and then it freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws because you don't paint the same thing every year. Once it continues to go back and forth, the paint is shot. But if you kept it in your basement or kept it in an, an area where it's roomish temperature and not freezing you're going to have a better chance of going back to that paint and being able to actually use it. If all else fails, you can take at least a sample of it. You can color match it and get some and get another $40, $50 gallon of, of, of paint. I think that's it for right now. You can certainly take this, this uh, bag that you put on there and trim it up depending on how fussy you want it to be. Um, it's a great it's a great way of of uh, of storing your stuff. Thank you very much, and I hope you learned something. And we will see you then on the next video. Oh oh oh! Before you leave, if you would please, please subscribe. My humblest thank yous.